In today's video, we're going to discuss floppy eyelid syndrome. It's a syndrome that's very commonly seen in patients with sleep apnea and can be related to CPAP use. So stay tuned for today's video. I'm Dr. D. I'm an optometrist and dry eye specialist making videos for you about the intersection of eye health and eye beauty so you can have healthy, beautiful, comfortable eyes. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below right here so you never miss a video I do post weekly. In my last video, I talked at length about the effect of CPAP machines and eye health and dry eye, and I wanted to make an additional video about floppy eyelid syndrome. Now I mentioned it in the last video, but today's video is all about floppy eyelids because we can't talk about CPAP and eyes and eye health without discussing eyelid laxity and sleep apnea and the relationship there. So as I first talked about in that video last week, sleep apnea is a potentially serious sleep disorder in which breathing repeatedly stops and starts and CPAP machines are often prescribed to help patients. Now these CPAP machines due to airflow can cause dry eye syndrome and they're more prone to do so in these patients who have sleep apnea and floppy eyelid syndrome, although it can cause dry eye in any patient with sleep apnea that you use a, a CPAP on I me, mean, honestly. Floppy eyelid syndrome just creates an environment where it's more likely that you'll have dry eye symptoms. So what is floppy eyelid syndrome? So it's an underdiagnosed, frequently bilateral, meaning both eyes are affected, malposition of the lids. They're not positioned appropriately and they're not quite as tight as they should be. It commonly is gonna involve the upper eyelids and it'll present oftentimes to us as recurrent or chronic ocular surface irritation. So anytime a patient has a lot of dry eye that won't go away, you really want to assess those lids and see if they are floppy or if they are opposed to the eye like they should be. You can also have a chronic papillary conjunctivitis. So a papillary conjunctivitis is on the palpebral conjunctiva. So palpebral conj is underneath the lid. We see that by flipping the eyelid. We often think of the conjunctiva as the white part of the eye. Now that is part of the conjunctiva, but that's the bulbar conjunctiva on the, you can think of it, the bulb of the eye. And the palpebral cons are the areas down below and up above underneath the lid. And so your provider really needs to flip your eyelid to see a papillary conjunctivitis. So the upper palpebral conjunctiva from this severe laxity, patients will often present with a papillary conjunctivitis or these little inflammatory bumps underneath their upper lid. There's also a decrease in the amount of elastin in the lid. So studies have shown that there's a significant decrease in the amount of elastin within the tarsal plate, so that's up here, and the eyelid skin itself, making that lid just truly more like you can pull it away from the eye and it kind of tense up. That's how floppy these lids can be. The mechanism is that it's probably induced by repeated mechanical stress. So that can be from eye rubbing or even just like sleeping habits, sleeping on a particular side all the time or sleeping directly on your eyes. There is a significant correlation between obstructive sleep apnea severity and floppy eyelid syndrome, even after adjusting the studies for age, sex, and body mass index. And results suggest that severe obstructive sleep apnea is an independent risk factor for floppy eyelid syndrome, meaning there is absolutely a connection and if you have sleep apnea, you are more likely to have floppy eyelids. So we've talked about in my last video how CPAP machines cause dry eye disease, but can floppy eyelids themselves cause dry eye disease as well? Well, what happens is the eyelid can often flip. It's so floppy and so loose that when your eye or a face contacts the pillow, it can expose your eye to the environment because that lid just flips over. And then your affected eye may develop dryness, redness, chronic irritation, discharge, and even infection from the eye. And if left untreated, you can certainly have um, ongoing, you know, worsening, exacerbating dry eye, but also possible to have corneal ulcerations, meaning the front part of your eye actually starts having a sore or scarring of your cornea that can lead to vision loss. 
So what are you supposed to do if you have floppy eyelids? How do you get rid of it? Does it go away? Well, conservatively, what we do for floppy eyelids, we just lubricate your eyes. You know, we know that the problem tends to be at night, and so we use a nighttime eye shield. There are great little rubber ones that create a nice shield around your eyes. We carry them in the office, and I'll make sure to link them down below. So that's what we do first, just conservative measures. We make you aware of it. We give you some tools to lubricate your eyes and protect them from the lids flopping over. We also know that patients with floppy eyelid and obstructive sleep apnea, so if you definitely have both, there can be an improvement in your ocular signs and symptoms after you've been on your CPAP for a while. And when cases get worse, you can have a corrective surgery. So I use an oculoplastic surgeon for cases like this to help with that eyelid laxity. And that can really result in significant improvement. All right, so this is kind of a bonus video. I thought it would be fun and necessary after making that whole video about CPAPs and dry eye disease. So I hope you enjoyed learning just a little bit more about floppy eyelids. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you have floppy eyelid syndrome, what has helped for you? If you have any tips and tricks for others watching this channel, I'd love to see that as well. Thanks as always for watching. That's gonna be it for today's iSchool lesson. Class is dismissed and I'll see you next time.